What was the, uh, the difference maker this week compared to Pac-12 championships? Well, I think we had a complete team effort at regionals, and uh, you know we had we were led by Chase this week with his with his second place finish. He opened up with a 65 and and really played solid golf the rest of the way. Um, and Christian too, they've led the way a lot this year for us. But the difference really was Sam's great play, um, and you know opening up the first round, shooting even par. I think he had even par and even pars on the bookend. And uh, Johnny and Chaz, same thing. You know, we just had four scores, really five scores on every single round that was going to work at the regional championship, combined with the fact that we had a few guys pop on different rounds. So it was a great recipe for the scoring component. And really, that's indicative of the players that we believe we have every week. So this is your first regional championship. How do you kind of, I mean, you won the Pac-12 championship. How do you kind of view this accomplishment? Well, this is this is certainly something that we celebrate and, and work on as a as a team, and it's a, a a a place that our program has seen success in the past. So yes, this is a stepping stepping stone opportunity for us. Um, but it's also you know we recruit some of the best players across the country and world. Uh, we tee it up in the best conference to compete in, and we've won that conference. So we know this is a space that we're capable of competing, and something that we feel like we have control over how we perform, we can play at this level. So um, I don't know. We haven't really talked about that, and we aren't really focusing on that. It's it's more uh, another tournament this week, and it's not just any tournament. We know that. But on the other hand, we can simplify things internally and, and really get our team prepared to just execute the tee shot on one and see where they want to try to hit their second shot and really kind of step-by-step -step move through the week. Is this your first NCAA championship since 2012 when you're at a &M? Correct. Yeah. Yeah. First time. About coaching in that environment and being a part of that. Um, I think, I think, some of the things I draw back from are it's really this is just such a really fun time of the year to coach a team because we're done with school now, and we had success just a week ago, and now we have something that we're really looking forward to. to. And I think that that leads to oh the the competition and such, but really it's the time we get to spend together, which is what is really fun. And the, the fact that we're gonna get to be in a familiar environment on a golf course that we're familiar, if we happen to, I, I'm not saying this as a, as, a, as a hope, but the better we play, the more time we get to spend together this week too. So I think that's a, a nugget that, that benefits us because we, we generally enjoy each other's company and we like talking sports after the round or you know talking about a great shot or, oh, this guy did that, or, you know, like that kind of stuff. That, that's like who we are as a team and the chemistry that we have. The time we get together is really the best part about it. Sam, when, when you're out on a, the course in these kind of events, are you able to keep track in any way of what the rest of, the, of your teammates are doing with their scores? Is someone relaying that to you, or you just laser focused on yourself? Um, I try not to look at the scoreboard until after. Um, I sometimes ask around, see, how we're doing. Um, sometimes I'll have scoreboards up, but I kind of try to stay focused on what I'm doing until after the round. So in Texas, I mean, how aware of, were you of, you knew where you were going into the last round, but was it, you didn't really know what was going on with the other? Uh, Yeah, not a ton. I could kind of tell from the coaches and from the couple scoreboards they had around the course that we were doing pretty good. And um, coming off 17, they had a scoreboard right next to the green and I could see we we're in the lead in a pretty good spot um, but other than that I just tried to focus on what I was doing and do the best I could. Have you played Greyhawk before? Um, yeah I, we've all played Greyhawk many times so um, it's a course we I think we're very fortunate that we get to play on desert courses a lot and Greyhawk is one of those so um, we're all playing well I think we're all super confident going in there and um, we're excited. Is, is for either of you, is there any advantage to getting to watch the, the women's tournament on the same course on TV ahead of time and see maybe how it's playing right now compared to the last time you've been there? Yeah, I think I think seeing how the balls are reacting when they're landing on the greens and the green speeds can indicate a little, seeing how the ball sits in the rough. Um, but, you know, the course will set up a little bit differently for us and uh, there's, there's no guarantees that the green speeds won't speed up or firm up. And a lot of the holes might play a little differently. I, I was looking at some of the stats from scoring for, for the women's last year and what the most difficult holes were statistically 
and that of the men's, and it, there's no, I'm not a statistician here, but there wasn't a correlation that I could draw on a quick review that says, oh, hole number 18 is going to play really, really easy for the men and not so much for the women or vice versa. And, and part of that's a little bit 18 for specifically is a part four in the men's and it's a five in the women's. But the, the short version of that is I don't think we're studying too much of what's going on there this week as it relates to the women's game as, as how we prepare our team right now. When was the last time that you guys played at uh, Greyhawk? We went up there Easter weekend on, on Friday. Okay. Yeah, so I think that was, I'm guessing a little bit here, but May, uh, March, late March. I assume for a tournament or just? No, no, you can play, you can play the course uh, in advance. So, so a lot of teams have, have flown into Arizona to, to play practice rounds at Greyhawk up until May 1. Starting May 1, you can't, no one can access the site to practice or play. So, you know, we we're fortunate to take our team up there a couple of times this year. We've done it the last couple of years as well. So um, it's, it's, not, it's not foreign for us. The guys are familiar. They're, the best part of seeing the course in advance, in my opinion, is it'll allow us to not spend a ton of time talking about tee shots and targets from tee shots because there is familiarity there. Now we can really kind of start talking about hole locations, green speeds, chipping from this spot or not having to chip from that spot, um, really kind of go strategy into the greens in the practice round. So your uh, predecessor made it to 21 straight NCAA championships. Is that realistic in today's age? Yeah, I think so. You know, I think, I think uh, if you have a program where you're able to recruit great players like we are, and Coach LaRose's success is unmatched, really, it is. He's the only coach that's won two national championships, or national championship in both men's and women's game. Um, and so for, for him to put a streak like that together, it, it certainly it sets a bar that's very high and very, uh, very much something that we're aware of. But, you know, I think it's not, it's not something that you want to look at in terms of a streak per se it's more just like like golf you know it's like how do we get ready for this year and and what do we do at the beginning of this year what are, who are the who are the players on our team the personnel on our team how are we going to have them ready for this opportunity at the the regional last week to, to to have the success so that okay this is this is we're there and the experience that we'll pick up this year we're taking six guys up there five of whom have eligibility remaining so you know that's only going regardless of how the outcome that happens this year we will have that experience to draw from. We'll know what it was like to be there. It'll it'll only increase our appetite to get back, and and that's that's how it starts. So are you expecting to play the same five that you did last week? We'll start that way, but there's there's no doubt in my mind on a long week that there's a scenario that plays out where we would sub a player in or sub a player out, and um, we're just lucky that we have six great players who are capable of helping our team at, at any minute. And who's the sixth? Adric Chan. Adric Chance traveled with us to regionals. He brings a terrific energy. Um, he's he's played some of the best golf for us over his career at times, and uh, he's he's definitely a guy who, especially in that role where he comes in in a second or third or whatever round because of whatever reason, someone's not playing well, someone gets stung by a bee, someone's overheated, whatever it might be. Adric's a guy that we believe we can put in there, and he can post a round for us. So we're really happy he's going with us. I'm doing a breakdown of the, the five guys from last week and then the guys that you're bringing in this week as well. Um, can you just, I know it's going to be a long winded answer, but can you just talk about each one of those guys and, and what they've done this year and, and what you expect from them this week? Yeah, of course. Um, so Christian Banky has been our, our senior leader for really from the start to finish. He won at home Arizona Intercollegiate and has assembled a year where he's, he's going to be talked about for an All-American award. Um, he's just that good. I think his best quality is – his the mindset that he's able to to play from he's very composed very very stoic very professional and he's very aware of his how he's thinking in his conscious and subconscious and i think because of that his routine is so good he's capable in any moment of performing at a very high level which we've seen and we've relied on christian as much or more than than anybody uh as far as it relates to performances this year. Chase Sienkiewicz, who you met last week, um, has got an unbelievable game, uh, especially starting with his length. He's worked really hard to um, hone in other scoring skills necessary. He's, he's become a very good wedge player. His putting is very good. He's learned how to putt with better speed. 
And, uh, you know, I think he's the kind of guy that loves the lights on him at the end. So that's a good position for us to have someone like that who's ready and willing to take that on. Um, I think his, his work with his off-speed shots has really showed this semester, which is why he's finished so many tournaments off. He finished second just last week with, with some, some just really, really high finishes. So I'm um, looking forward to Chase to keep rolling his confidence and play well. Johnny Walker's played in our three spot for the last few weeks. He's a freshman from Chandler. Um, played on a state championship high school team. Is a very, very uh, talented golfer, immensely, immensely talented as far as off the tee and what have you. But I think his, his best quality is his putting. He can go unconscious with his putting. Um, his best quality in golf. He's, he's got some great qualities as a young man too. Um, but uh, he, and he loves wings too. But um, he, uh, Johnny is, is somebody who can go unconscious with his putter, which allows him to score. And he, he, uh, you know, he's posted some very, very low rounds for us this year, both in qualifying and tournaments. And he's going to play in a, on a golf course he's very familiar in a climate he's very familiar competing in. So uh, certainly excited to see what Johnny can do for us. Uh, you got Sammy, who's been playing every single tournament for us this year. He's, he's, he's got the best fundamentals on our team. He's a guy who can absolutely put the ball in play off the tee. We've worked really hard with course management and the patience part of that because I think his best quality comes from – just boringly beating the golf course and letting the others around kind of, you know, make their mistakes and allow his scoring to lead to that. Um, he's got zero deficiencies in any part of his game. I love the way he chips with his high toe wedge and uh, gets a lot of spin on, on his chips. So I think, um, you know, his short game will absolutely be something that he'll rely on at times this week. And I never, ever, ever mind seeing Sammy chipping. You know, he's just, he's just that good with his chipping. Um, that he gives, you know, he gives all of us confidence when we get to see him play. And uh, Chaz really has really stepped up this last week. With uh, he's just he's really committed to being a very smart player from the tee. We had an internal team qualifier, and he he played. Um, he played, we played three rounds of golf. The first round, he did use his driver quite a bit, and he drives the ball really well with his driver, but he hits his two irons so far and three irons so far off the tee that um, he's able to hit those clubs, and he's just become very, very intelligent with his attack of the course. So um, Chaz is, is, is I'm really excited and happy for him to find his game at this time of year because he's been a welcome addition. He came up with, with two huge rounds. I mean, really, he played three great rounds at, at the regional um, and the second two rounds, especially after the bit of adversity he faced in round one, was just a t it, it told me that he's 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 ready, he's matured, and he's ready for you know high level golf. And so those guys have carried us through the regional. And Adric Chan, the the young man I mentioned earlier too, like I said, he's he's the kind of player who doesn't need to get into a rhythm to start scoring. We could all go tee it up at any course here in Tucson and he could he could absolutely shoot seven or eight under par. I'm not trying to forecast that's gonna happen. I don't know exactly how things play out, but AC's a young man that has, has got a lot of confidence in his game. When we played a match play tournament last year, we purposely put him in the back because we know he's the kind of guy who can who can play with that kind of pressure in the back. And uh, you know, he he had we had won the match we played in the fall at a lotion club um, but he was on the 18th tee ready to ready to win his match one up um, with all of it on the line so um, that's that's why Adric's as valuable in this position as, as he is and uh, we couldn't be more excited about the team we're bringing up to Greyhawk. Sam uh, what was the mood like after the NCAA but the, excuse me the uh, the Pac-12 tournament and where you finished and and how were you guys able to just kind of push that aside for regionals? Um, we knew we had a great opportunity coming up at regionals. Um, we all kind of just kept believing in ourselves. We knew we were better than that. Um, and we knew how hard it was to get to nationals, but we kind of just uh, focused in on the game plan and we got off to a great start and kind of just continued that throughout the week. So. Is that kind of a good indication that each tournament can just be a separate entity and that one doesn't have a, an impact on how you're going to perform at the next? Yeah, definitely. In golf, um, there's ups and downs, but I think we're in a good rhythm now. We're all playing great golf, and we're all super confident um, going into next week. Sam, what do you consider to be the defining characteristic of this team this season? Um, our our chemistry is super good. We all love hanging out with each other. We all love playing with each other. Um, 
and I think that makes it easy on us going into tournaments. Um, everyone just loves being there, and we can all rally around each other, whether someone has a bad round or a good round. Um, we can just keep that going throughout the whole tournament. So, yeah. Three rounds, or three, I should say, three tournaments last season for you as a freshman. What do you learn about yourself through that experience that applied this year in your sophomore season? Yeah, it gave me some great experience last year. Um, not always, not in the lineup, but just playing college golf is much different than junior golf. Um, so it gave me some things to work on over the summer and then coming to this year, knowing, kind of knowing what to expect. Still not playing in a ton of college tournaments yet, but I feel like I've gained that experience this year, um, which was pretty cool. Pretty cool. What's the difference between college golf and junior golf? Um, a lot better competition, I think, better courses, um, tougher pins for sure. You definitely got to think your way around the courses much more and not put the ball in um, bad spots. So, yeah. Moved on most. Um, I think junior golf, I'd kind of just um, like not really have a plan before going into the round, but I feel like in college golf, with help with the coaches and teammates, we uh, we always have a plan before we go into the tournament, which I think helps a lot, especially off the tees. Um, you're kind you're kind of you kind of know what to expect once you get to the hole, which I think takes some pressure off. Jim is saying, if uh, Sam's saying that defining quality is chemistry, would you agree? Oh yeah, definitely. I mean, it's it's fun as a the coach because I get to experience part of that chemistry. I get to be a, a small piece of that, but I don't get to see it all the time. So there there are times as a coach, and I think it's just the neurotic nature of my personality where I'm wondering if we're gelling or wondering if there's you know. But then, you know. I, if if we haven't been traveling for a week, for example, even this week, you know, the guys are given a fair bit of independence as it relates to preparation. That's not just that's normal for our program. Um, you know, Sam might feel like he wants to work on his putting. Chase might want to work on his chipping. Christian might need to, uh, you know, work on a tee ball or whatever. I'm just making stuff up. So, you know, when we're not together, I wonder how that absence will will determine like how the energy comes out for the next trip and when we get together I'm so relieved because we have just the banter is back and the you know the guys are back in the car and I get I get cued in on about 15 percent of the inside jokes which is enough um you know I pretend like I want to know a little more but they they have they're, they're just really really good guys who love to, to spend the time together love to play the game of golf and love to compete so it makes our job as coaches very easy um, when we have these kind of young men in our program. For you personally, 10 years since the last time you made it to the NCAA championships, what is this like for you? It's it's really cool. I, honestly, I haven't had a chance to to really soak in anything because, you know, there was the the the, the outcome that we experienced and the, the, the fun and joy that came from the outcome last week. But um, now it's just been full preparation mode because, um, you know, we're not – we're not going to talk about this tournament uh, as as it is something bigger than a round of golf each time. We're going to try to deconstruct the championship into one round of golf. You know, that's that's what that's what we're asked to do on Friday. We're just going to play one round of golf. And so, you know, for me, I'm not I'm not really trying to make this championship any bigger than one round of golf, followed by a second round, followed by a third round. So I have to subscribe to that myself if if I want to try to coach and share that energy with our team. And uh, the guys make it really easy to do that because we have such a cross section of experience and youth that generally speaking, people are listening and learning and sharing information. Our, we have great leadership on our team, sharing information to the younger guys. So we're in lockstep as far as our preparation goes. And I think, you know, when it's all said and done, I hope there's a, a reason to look back and reflect and, and really celebrate that success, but right now we've got a job to do and we're just preparing for it. That said, given the, the time span between these two appearances, what does that say about the, the nature and, and the competition of, of this sport? Yeah, there's, there's no promises, that's for sure. And, uh, you know, with, with college golf, the parity is, is, is very, very, very real. And it's, you know, 
not a given for any program to be at the national championship every single year. So, you know, getting a chance to be there is is something that our team and, and the players on our team this year have earned. And I couldn't be more proud of that for them. And, uh, you know, I think I think for us, just having the chance to to compete and I think especially because it's in Arizona, it's just really exciting for us to get to play in you know, the state of Arizona, in Phoenix, Scottsdale, where we have a ton of alums who embrace this great university. We have so many fans. We've got the baseball team competing up there this week, too. So, you know, we're excited for the energy that will be around, and we'll definitely feed off of that energy as well. So for both of you, uh, what is it going to take to win a national championship? Um, I think it's, it's going to be a long week, so we got to stay patient. Um, take it one round at a time, like Coach was saying. And, um, I mean, if you make it all the way, it's six or six or seven days of golf in a row. Um, so you got to relax, stay patient, and um, get some rest for sure. Yeah, I think it's going to require – team uh, you know I'm using a little bit of coach speak here but much like we had golf last week some of the strategy at college station was guys have to make decisions in the moment that are in the best interest of team we don't need any hero shots we don't need any any um anybody to do anything they're not capable of because the reality is we're so far away from winning the national championship right now because there are so many rounds of golf that have to be played before that's even a possibility um that it's it's not even something we're going to talk about. There's just there's just one round of golf on Friday, and that means Sam's strategy off of one tee, Chase's strategy off of one tee, Christian, you know, Chaz going on through Johnny, um, and and you know, our goal is to to execute that plan the best we can on Friday because if we can feed off of some good energy after round one, usually that that allows you to continue to take baby steps towards that bigger goal for, even for the week. And I know it's a very good question, but you know, the reality is the national championship won't be decided until next Wednesday. And there's there's four rounds of stroke play and two matches ahead of that. So it's it's not something that we're talking about yet. So Sam, how do you stop yourself from thinking ahead? Um, kind of just focusing on, uh, well, right now the practice round and then focus on the first round and then just go from there. Um, I know at regionals, we got off to a great start shooting 12 under in the first round and then we could kind of um kind of just coast from there so i think getting off to a great uh good start um i think would be uh very beneficial going forward anything else for jim or sam <coughs> all right thank you gentlemen yeah thank you guys